This is the last video for Lesson 5, the Intro to Fractions, and this is Fractions on a Number Line, Lesson 5D. If you've missed or skipped previous videos and become lost or confused, which you might, click on the description for help, okay? We can use number lines to locate and compare fractions. We just need to keep in mind that number lines have values that are evenly spaced. No matter how bad my number lines look, they're meant to be evenly spaced, so you can give me a break if they're not perfect. Okay, I appreciate it. Moving to the right increases the values. Moving to the left decreases the values. And proper fractions are in between a 0 and 1. We learned that in the previous videos. And improper fractions are equal to 1 or are greater than 1. So it could be 3 thirds or 4 thirds. That would be greater than 1. And mixed numbers are greater than 1 because it's a whole number next to a fraction that makes the mixed number. So it says to place a dot on the number line to locate fractions with numerators that are less than their denominators. So remember, the numerator is the top one. The denominator is the bottom one. So we're looking for ones that have a small top, a small numerator. So out of all of these, which fractions would have numerators that are less than their denominators? The only ones that will fit is the one-third and two-thirds. Now, I know you see them here, but that would be a mixed number. That would be one and one-third. So that wouldn't just be a fraction. That would be a mixed number. And if it said place a dot on the number line to locate mixed numbers that have numerators that are less than the denominators, then these would count. But it doesn't say mixed numbers. It says fractions. So that means proper fractions. So the one-third and the two-third would fit. And they're less than one. Okay? Tricky wording, huh? Okay, let's try this one. Place a dot on the number line to locate a number that makes the comparison true. So here we've got a question mark, and we can see that it's supposed to be greater than 1 and 2 fourths, but less than a 2. Well, if it's greater than 1 and 2 fourths, then here's 1, 1 fourth, 2 fourth. So that means if it's greater than this, then it can't be these. So all of these are a no, okay? Because it's greater than that. And it says it's less than a 2. Well, if it's less than 2, it doesn't include 2. So all of these are not counted. The only thing that's left is a 1 and 3 fourths. And we would read this comparison as a number is greater than 1 and 2 fourths. Whoops, that's supposed to be a 2 and less than 2. So you start reading it in the middle. See? You start reading this in the middle. Whenever you see these comparisons and it's got two less than or greater than signs, it's got two comparison signs, start reading in the middle. Even if there's a variable here, if it says n or x or p or q or s or whatever the variable is, you start reading it in the center. A number is greater than, because the big mouth is facing it, so it's greater than, one and two fourths, and it's less than two. See? This one says place a dot to show the mixed number two and two thirds. So the first thing we do is locate the two and then move to the two thirds. One third, two third. So it'd be right here, wouldn't it? Two and two thirds. This one says place a dot to show the mixed number one and three eighths. First thing we do is we locate the whole number 1, and then we locate the 3 a's. 1 a's, 2 a's, 3 a's. So be right here. So when you're locating these on a number line, look for the whole number first, then move to the fraction. Okay? This one says place a dot on any number that makes this comparison true. So some number is less than 2, but greater than, whoops, I'm missing my fraction line, but greater than 4 fifths. We start reading it in the middle. Some number is less than 2, but greater than 4 fifths. So if it's less than 2, it can't include 2, can it? So the 2 is not included. And it says it's greater than 4 fifths. Well, that's not a mixed number. It's just 4 fifths by itself, so it's a proper fraction. That's way over here. So that means 
it's somewhere in between here. So if we put a dot on any one of these, it won't make that comparison true. One is less than two and greater than four fifths. One and one fifth, one and two fifths, one and three fifths, one and four fifths. Every single one of these in here would make the comparison true. We could put a dot on any one of these and we'd be okay, all right? Now this one's a little tricky and there's a, an example like this in the book that you have to do. It says, Lisa arrived at work at 9.30 a.m. and left at 1.30 p.m. Place a dot to show the time she left. Well, this is tricky because that 9.30 a.m. is unnecessary information. It doesn't say how many hours she worked. It says place a dot to show the time she left. And she left at 1.30 p.m. Now, all we've got is this number line from 0 to 3. So we think of a clock. If we wanted to show 1.30, that would be... This would be the 3 on the clock, wouldn't it? This would be the 12. This would be the 3. That would be the 6. That would be the 9, right? And this area here is a quarter hour. This area here is a half hour. And then this area here is three-fourths of an hour. See that? And then the whole thing would be one hour for the minute hand. So if we want to show the time she left, we need to show one and a half, don't we? because 30 minutes is half of an hour, so it'd be one and half. So here's the one, here's the two. It would be right in between the one and the two. This right here in the middle is one and a half. So it would be right there, see? This is split into fourths, see? One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, one. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, two. One fourth, three fourths, four. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, three. See? So one thirty would be one and a half because thirty minutes is half of sixty minutes. That's the half hour. And the minute hand would be pointing to the six, wouldn't it? Isn't that a tricky one? See if you can do that one in the book. All right. Tala needs four and three fourths yards of ribbon to wrap gifts. Place a dot to show four and three fourths. First thing we do is locate the whole number four, because it's a nice mixed number, right? We locate the four, it's right here, and now we need to find three-fourths. So, we look, well, this one right here, if this is the four, and that's the five, then this middle one is four and a half, isn't it? So that's the half mark. Then that must be one-fourth, and that must be three-fourths, just like a clock. See? One-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, five. This is the halfway mark. So if we want to find four and three-fourths, it would be right here. In between the half and the five. See that? So these can get a little tricky. And you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 77 with all those number lines. All right? I tried to give as many examples as I could that were similar to the problems in the book. Because we are going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing these fractions in Lesson 7. So that's what we're getting ready for. All right? Our next video is going to be equal fractions. We're going to move to Lesson 6, 6A. And if you need more help, you can watch these videos, all of Chapter 9 for Grade 3, all of Chapter 6 for Grade 4, and this is a number line video in this GED Math Playlist 1F, and then the fraction ones we've done so far, 5A, 5B, 5C. All right? So right at your fingertips, a click away, okay? All right, we're going to move on to the next lesson, and I hope you do well on the skill focus. And remember, if you have trouble with it, watch this video again or watch those grade-level videos to help, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.